Welcome to our F1 2024 Mexican Grand Prix predictions. I'm Songan and today I'm unfortunately alone as Ajax didn't quite make it here to the recording, but I have his prediction, so I'll try to um, entertain you as much as I could, as I can, uh, technically alone. It's unfortunate, but I think I'll manage it. Uh, we'll get through these pretty quickly. I don't really have much to say about this circuit itself. It's really, really boring battle for overtaking. The only interesting thing is that it's like two kilometers above the sea level. So the the air is pretty thin, uh, meaning there's less downforce, less engine cooling that could bring some technical difficulties for the teams. But other than that, there's very little overtaking. Uh, it's very difficult to overtake and in general, just not a great circuit. Probably going to be a very boring race, but hopefully uh, this season can change that. Anyways, uh, let's get to the predictions. Qualifying starting from P5. Ajax is first. He got Carl Sainz. My P5 would be actually, I kind of have to improvise here because I haven't, pre <laughs> I haven't prepared my own. Um, I have the idea of the top three in my head. I'll try to... Okay, you know what? I'm going to go with... Um, Difficult. I'm gonna go with Oscar Piastri for P5. I think that's a decent position for Oscar. He got P5 in in the US as well. I think this track is also not one of his greatest tracks, just like last year. Also in the USA, he struggled just like last year compared to Lando. Yeah, Oscar is not having the greatest uh, the greatest form ever since his win in Baku. He's been very much far off of Lando. Uh, and Lando really needs those points taken off Max in the championship. I mean, the championship is over, but it wasn't over two races ago. Unfortunately for Lando, it is now, and uh, Piastri wasn't there to capitalize on, uh, on the McLaren being strong. Um, that's kind of how it is right now. Uh, Oscar P4 for Ajax, so he's believing a little bit more to the McLarens. Uh, I don't believe them too much, but I don't think they're going to be out of the top five. That's just too yeah too unrealistic considering they've been well uh one of the quickest cars this season if not the quickest overall um debatable about that but yeah e4 of mine is oh, well, i'm gonna go with carlos i'm gonna go with the reverse strategy of a for ajax um p4 for carlos signs i think ferrari are gonna be good at this track um for no particular reason i think just They've been strong ever since the upgrade in, in Monza, and those four or five circuits that, that they're just been uh, have been pretty different. I mean, Monza is a is a specific circuit. Then we have Baku. I mean, yeah, Monza and Baku have similarities, but Singapore. Uh, I think the Ferraris were the second quickest car and could have made not. I don't know if they could have fought fought for a win. Probably not, considering Lando's pace in the but maybe for pole position. Still, um, Ferraris had been the second quickest car at worst ever since the Monza upgrade, and that's pretty much what I'm, I'm basing this off. Um, P3 for AJX is Max Verstappen, and my P3 is Lando Norris. And qualifying, I think, is going to only get to P3. I don't think McLaren will challenge for a pole position this time. Probably a little bit bold, but I don't think they will quite managed to get there uh, with Lando. Obviously, Oscar is also going qualifying, but as I said uh, earlier, not quite in his best form uh, at the moment. Uh, P2 for Charles Leclerc for Ajax. Um, he's believing in the Charles with great title challenge, but it's going to be a P2 in the championship challenge, basically. He, he has to outscore Lando by like 20 20 something points um in just remaining five races i want to say uh and two sprints so there's definitely, definitely a chance uh considering mclaren uh fell off the pace a little bit uh in us um i don't know what happened exactly with those upgrades but they seem like they made the car slower for some reason mp2 is is max verstappen I think he's going to get P2 in qualifying. I think Red Bull will maintain their speed over to Mexico. Uh, Red Bull is always quick in Mexico. Max has won here the last three times we've raced here. And the, I mean, he won it, he won it here in 2023, 2022, 2021 as well. 
2020, I think that was the year where we didn't have a Mexican Grand Prix. I may be mistaken. And if it was, probably it was a Mercedes dominance. Um, anyways, uh, 2019, he won here, I think. Maybe actually it was probably Lewis uh, over Sepp, I think. I may remember that the uh, year uh, wrongly. To be fair, 2018 definitely was a max win ahead of Ricardo. I think that was a Red Bull one too back then. And uh, 2017 that was a uh, too long time for me to remember. Honestly, yeah, Max is really good at the circuit. So is Red Bull. Um, I think that will continue. I don't think there's a reason for that to not continue. P1 for Ajax is Lando Norris. Obviously, um, he's believing in him being the quickest in qualifying at the moment. Was a Fairly lucky pole position in the US, I gotta say, but I don't think the McLaren is that slow as uh, it may seem in qualifying, uh, at least. I predict them at a P5 3 3, but still, I don't think those gaps will be big. I think that's there could be like two tens between the top six, honestly. Um, even the Mercedes can get there. Um, like last year, we saw Ricardo being in P4 not that far off pole position itself. Like anything can happen. This circuit is pretty. Very, very short uh, for its uh, characteristics. I mean, long straights all over here. Um, and it's still, like, pretty short for uh, well, for how it looks on, on the outside. I mean, the, this, the start finish straight is, is very long, uh, mainly thanks to the start being right, right at the start of the straight. So the round on the turn one is very long. P1 for me is obviously Charles Leclerc. I think he's gonna get a pole position once again here. I think he got it, got it last year and uh, the year before that I think it was Max. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but last year definitely was a Ferrari. I think it was a Ferrari one too as well. Um, unfortunately, I didn't quite manage to have the race, race space over Max. Uh, unfortunately, I finished P3 because the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton was also pretty quick that race. I think he's gonna get another pole um, coming off a very dominant victory in US after taking the lead from P4 on lap 1 and turn 1, basically. <laughs> that was an epic moment. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with Charles. I don't think he's going to be uh, anywhere. Uh, well, I, I don't think he's going to be far off uh, the top this, this time. As, as I'm breaking, obviously, pole, pole position. Anyways, uh, Grand Prix. Uh, P5 for Ajax is George Russell. Interesting. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Carlos. I think he's gonna drop the P5 for no apparent reason. Maybe strategy or you know, uh, maybe break space. I, I, anything can happen during the race. Obviously, they can DNF as well. Um, anything can happen in Mexico. Uh, we have seen some strange results over the years. Um, yeah, P4 for for Ajax is Max Verstappen outside of the podium in Mexico. I don't know, it feels kind of unrealistic for me, personally, but I mean, if if it works out for him, good good for him, and I guess good for Formula 1 as well, because we're going to have just a little bit of title, title hope, maybe for some people, not quite for me, um, even though I said we, I didn't quite mean it, I, I, I thought this uh, title was over back in Bahrain, and I, I haven't changed my mind since. Um, uh, P4 for me is, is Oscar. I think they're, those two are going to change. I think Oscar is going to have a better race than last time. He finished like P7 or P6 uh, last time in 12.3. To be fair, this, car, this year's car is much better. But still, uh, I don't think Oscar will be quite up there on the podium. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, P3 for Ajax is Oscar Piastri, so he's predicting. A double, well, sorry, <laughs> a little bit of a spoiler. Um, yeah, uh, but McLaren party for PS3, um, obviously, there. Uh, my P3 is Landon Norris. I think he's gonna uh, remain where he is in P3. Um, no apparent reason. I think he's gonna just not gonna challenge those two out ahead of him. Uh, there's a pace maybe at the start, but it's difficult when, he, when, it's, when you're Landon Norris at the start of a race. So. If he actually qualifies P3 and get, uh, I mean, he gets a good start, that run down to the turn one is pretty, pretty long. May get there, but it's it's debatable. Uh, Lionel or his starts aren't that reliable for me to bet on that. I, I think it's gonna remain in P3. P2 though for Ajax is Charles Leclerc, and actually think the same. I think he's gonna get P2. 
I think it's Max for Stefan winning. Obviously for me, for Ajax, it's Lana Norris. Yeah, I I think this. I want to believe Charles, but I also know how good Max is at his track, especially um, when it comes to the starts. Uh, he basically led the on lap one like after turn one uh, from every single position, like from like P one, P two, P three, P four, always gets there to, to first place. Doesn't matter if it's outside, inside, or the middle. He just always somehow ends up in first after turn one. I think it's gonna happen as well this year. Um, Round down to turn one, I think it's gonna overtake Charles. Uh, with Charles a little bit slowly behind him, I think Lano is remaining P three. Oscar maybe jumps Carlos at the start because of that finishes ahead. I don't think there's gonna be many overtakes, so that's mainly the reason. But I'm not changing the order that much. Uh, fastest lap though uh, for Ajax it's Lewis Hamilton, and for me I'm gonna go with you know, Carl Sainz. I haven't went hit with him in uh, in a while, so you know what I'm gonna go with. Fastest lap, Carl Sainz. Um, okay, least impressive team for Ajax it's it's Red Bull. Interesting. Uh, I don't know what's this based on. If Max is just in the top four, I think it's no, not a late impressive team for considering Red Bull haven't been the the, the best team out there in the last few races. Uh, but you know what? I mean, anything can happen. They can have a double DNF due to engine failures. Uh, we've seen uh, crazier stuff over the years. Um, my least impressive team. Mm, I'm gonna go with Haas. Uh, this is mainly based on how good of a weekend they had in Austin. I think they're not going to transfer the pace to Mexico as well. I think they're going to struggle uh, to get to the top 10 in both qualifying and the race. Also in last year, I think they had a similar issue. They just weren't quick at all, uh, uh, as well as Aston Martins. I think that was uh, one of the worst Aston Martin weekends last year uh, was in Mexico. I maybe could have picked Aston, but they're, I mean, <laughs> In Austin, they've been awful as well. There's nothing really much to say. Uh, Aston, Aston being less impressive team, they would basically need to be at the level of Sauber, uh, maybe maybe like below Alpine and ahead of Sauber. Uh, they would really need to be dreadful for that. Um, least impressive driver though, uh, for Max, uh, sorry, <laughs> for Ajax, it's Max, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Sergio Perez. Obviously, uh, I'm not gonna pick Max, that's a, uh, that's not very smart, and Perez is a very reliable choice, but to be fair, I, for the least impressive driver hits, basically needs to crash out in, in like at least one session, either it's qualifying or a race, uh, for that to be in consideration, because it's not going to be their own pace. That's Everyone knows that already, uh, so he has to be even worse than he normally is. Yeah, that's an uh, interesting prediction from Ajax. Uh, my most, sorry, least impressive driver. Actually, gonna, you know what? I'm gonna think, I'm gonna predict Lewis Hamilton actually carries that pay, uh, sorry, that um, malfortune over to Mexico. I think he's gonna actually have a really invisible weekend with potentially some troubles uh, or mechanical failure in the, in the race itself. When it comes to Lewis, I think he when he has a bad race, he has a bad couple of races, but then bounces back also with <laughs> ridiculous results like he did in the in the middle of the season, like after being beaten by George for a couple of races, he just went there and won two races in the span of four Grand Prix. Um, yeah, Lewis just does that stuff. Most impressive team though uh, for Ajax is Williams, and for me. It's um I'm gonna call for Tor Rosso. Um they've been alright in Austin and last year they've been very, very quick. Um potentially could transfer to this year as well. Uh Lost is in is in, is in that car, so they have a more reliable driver pairing. I think Sunoda is not gonna take a penalty like last year. So it may start further up the field and Lawson obviously. Uh, taking the penalty last time out, so he may qualify in the top 10 and potentially with both drivers taking points. I think that's a very good prediction there for me, potentially getting me points, hopefully. <laughs> I need those points. I'm still quite far behind Ajax in the standings. 
Most impressive driver though, uh, for HX, it's Alex Albon. And for me, it's Yuki Tsunoda. So, uh, yeah, having uh, the team and driver dynamic for the most impressive. Uh, for both of us, he's going with the Williams and Albon duo. I'm going with Tsunoda and Toro Rosso. I think Tsunoda has been ha going to have a good weekend. He got, I mean, he got outperformed by Lawson in Austin over the entire weekend. I think that's uh, pretty clear. Um, but I think he's going to bounce back in uh, in Mexico. When you think about it, I think Lawson has never driven in Mexico like on the track itself. I may be mis I may be wrong, but I think Lawson actually hasn't raced here at all. They may pay, uh, may give an advantage advantage to Snowda. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, actual prediction from EJX, it's WQ3 for Williams. Let's go. Uh, he's picking uh, Albon, most impressive driver, so I assume it's like a P7 for Albon and like a P9 for Colapinto for that to be um, realistic. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, if that happens, it, it could happen. I'm not ruling it out. Uh, it's either one or even both Williams cars in the ruling in the in the area of the top ten, um, or the, in the in the lower areas of the top ten, and just around that limit of points. Uh, they've been there ever since the summer break. That could continue definitely. Right. Uh, my actual prediction is um, I don't know actually. <laughs> The DRS the DRS uh, zone at the start I think is gonna say it's shortened, so they may not promote that much overtaking. But I don't, I don't wanna go that way. It's uh not really that reliable. I think I'm gonna go with a specific thing. And I'm gonna go with an engine failure in the Grand Prix. That's specifically for the race itself so no not like in the practice session it has to be in the grand prix during the race uh, and uh, yeah this is this is one of my boldest predictions out there because the reliability of this year's uh machineries are just yeah uh, they're ridiculous i i like basically no dns from mechanical failures at all out there just a couple i mean uh most rememberable, I mean, I think George and Silverstone, or uh, actually, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, there's a, a few Alpine DNFs, but I mean, Alpine uh, always DNFs, no matter how reliable the, the cars are in the specific season. Uh, yeah, the team is just, yeah, the, the engine especially, not great. Anyways, uh, this is it for the predictions. Thank you uh, for watching. I somehow made you not watching that thing um yeah i didn't choose the i didn't switch to the spreadsheet i'm so dumb but uh hopefully you don't know uh, yeah this, the, the, these are the predictions uh sorry for being dumb as hell but uh, things happen i don't have any exactly here to remind me uh of my mistakes uh these things happen hopefully you don't mind that much anyways uh thanks for watching and see you next time bye and uh Peace for your dicks.